Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL series, episode 90. Today we're going to be looking at frame buff buffer objects and um, render buffers. And we're going to be rendering a image of the current screen onto a frame buffer and then redrawing that as a texture on an object. It's a mouthful, but when you see it, it's pretty cool. Um, this is going to be two parts, and this is kind of going to be the tease episode. Um, if you're really interested, you can look at the source on GitHub. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you here how to do the setup of everything, and then I'll show you how we end up using it ultimately in the application on the second episode. So what, a what is a frame buffer? Frame buffer is a, an area that WebGL allows us to use to do different types of processing before displaying content. Um, we can use it as a texture image uh, for like off-screen drawing. Uh, frame buffer objects have attachments, color, depth, stencil, etc. And um, they're like the depth and stencil buffers themselves. Render buffers are a way for us to draw a general purpose thing um, that is going to be used later as well. Uh, a frame buffer can take say like an image or it could take a uh, render buffer, and we're going to use that here. Uh, there's going to be eight steps we're going to follow in this particular episode to set up the frame buffer object. Uh, we're going to go ahead and look at the first seven today, and then next time we'll look at using the uh, frame buffer object. So we need to create a frame buffer object, create a texture object, and a render object. You've seen the create texture objects before in the texture series that I did. You're going to bind the render object and its target size. You're going to attach the texture object uh, as a color attachment to the frame buffer object. Attach the render object as the depth attachment for the frame buffer object. And then check the status to make sure it is working OK. So let's jump into the application here. So we have this off screen height and width, 256, 256. This is just smaller than the general canvas so that we could draw it faster. Uh, as its texture because it's going to be a little bit smaller so we don't need to render it as a full uh, size uh, off screen. So that's just noted there. You can see here we have this init frame buffer object which is happening after uh, GL and that's what we're going to look at today. So jumping down into this, you can see what we're going to be looking at. We are going to instantiate a frame buffer, texture, and depth buffer. Depth buffer is just the name we're going to be using for our render buffer. We have a function defined here for error that if something happens wrong, we're going to go ahead and delete the frame buffer, delete the texture, and delete the render buffer uh, from the GL. Uh, like most things in WebGL, we're just going to go create rec frame buffer. And if we don't get one, we're just going to log it out and return that error message, or return error where we go ahead and set all those. And we're going to go create a texture. This is just like we've done in the previous episodes for creating textures. We're going to go ahead and you can see here's uh, setting the, the texture from the created texture. We're going to use off screen width and height, which is the 256 by 256. That's how big we're drawing it. And when this is the uh, text parameters that we're going to be using for it. We're going to set this on the frame buffer uh, as a JSON or J JavaScript uh, key just to make things really, really easy and efficient to remember. Uh, we don't have to do anything hard uh, to remember that. And then we'll make it for e easy reference later on the FBO frame buffer object. We're going to go ahead and create a render buffer, and that's going to be depth buffer. Again, checking, and if it doesn't uh, create, then we're going to fail out. We're going to go ahead and bind it as a render buffer. And then go ahead and set the storage uh, to the off-screen height and width. Note that this uh, buffer storage for the rendered buffer needs to be the same height and width as the texture in order for this to work. Finally, we're going to go back to the frame buffer, and we're going to go ahead and set the texture onto it and the render buffer onto it as the depth attachment and the color attachment here as we said that we were going to be doing uh, in our setup steps. Finally, we're going to go check the status of it, make sure it's good. And if it's good, then we are going to keep on going. And finally, we're going to unbind all of this uh, as we don't need it. We're just going to be storing this onto our state as FBO. 
and using it later in our application. It's kind of a tease of an episode because I'm not going to show you how we're going to do it, but I'm going to show you what uh, at least a little video of uh, what it looks like. So you can see here we have on this cube and on this cube, I did it on the blended ones, but it doesn't really matter where, you can see the uh, different, this is the picture of the current screen and it's being drawn as a buffer, or excuse me, as a texture onto each side of these cubes. So it's a pretty cool looking um, as it ends up being drawn. So especially with the blended cubes, it just makes it look really, really interesting. So that's it for this episode. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and give me a like. Uh, that'll help on YouTube a lot. Share on social media if you will. Go to proiontil.com and sign up for my newsletter. And follow me on social media as well. I will be uh, doing the second uh, uh, episode of this shortly. And that way you will be able to get the full effect. Thanks. Have a great one.